Hi guys, how you doing? I uh, hope you're not as tired as I feel at the moment. <laughs> it's just one of those those nights. Um, so I thought I'd just do a quick video based around, this is 10 years we've been doing the sessions and uh, I was just reflecting on you a bit on like the, 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 the approach to the sessions 10 years ago to, to now. Um, obviously when this first started 10 years ago I had, I had no intention or plan as to how it was going to evolve. Um, it was just 20 to 30 people coming to the shed for four, well initially it was just two weeks at a time actually. Um, and then we had a wee two week break then we did it again. And then it was getting quite popular. So we did our first 12 week block and when we did our 12 week block the focus was very much about like maximising fat loss results and, and seeing your before and after pictures and all that. And we did, and it was remarkably successful um, in terms of the, the results people got. But that was born out of pretty extreme advice and things to, and approaches in which to, to, to follow. Um, and what I didn't realise, or what I, well, there's lots of things I didn't realise um, and learned along the way, but I didn't expect the people that came initially to, and you guys as well that have come since, like, to just keep coming back. I think I thought, like, be a 12 week thing, then people probably just want to go back to the gym. Um, but I realised um, month after month that most people were, were quite enjoying the training and just kind of wanted to make it part of their training lifestyle as opposed to something they did once and then went back to what they were doing before. So as that happened, I realised that, like, the, 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 the advice that was, I was given or giving um, it was never. It was. It, it wasn't like suitable to a, like a life, a longer term sustainable lifestyle, like to equip you going forward. Um. So that. So there's been a bit of a shift or a big shift in terms of like the the approach from maximizing twelve weeks to like changing habits that are more sustainable, lifelong, which is obviously the way to go. But um, the reason I'm making this quick video is because obviously there's nothing wrong though with going through a, a period of maybe 12 weeks where if you're feeling quite motivated that you do want to maximise results and you do want to try and be a bit more strict than normal. Um, I think the difference being now, in hindsight, looking back, would be to know that it would be something you would be doing for a short term. You wouldn't just go back to what you were doing before, but that you know that, that this is a, a sort of a non-sustainable approach where you want to give yourself a real push before going back to, like, a less, a more sustainable, less extreme version of what you're doing. Um, and the reason I'm saying that is because I've had quite a few emails in, the, in the, these first few weeks from people who are quite motivated, obviously, because it's January, they're maybe going on their first summer holiday for the first time in a couple of years, and they're wanting to look good on the beach, all that kind of thing, or they're maybe getting married. That's various reasons why people might feel motivated more in January. It's just a kind of tradition, isn't it? So if that is you, then there's nothing wrong with wanting to go a bit more extreme for the, the rest of this block, for example. Um, in terms of training, I'll start with training because I think that's that'll not take long. There's not a lot more you, I would recommend you need to do. You've already got three sessions a week. I've already recommended, I think, a fourth session a week would be beneficial. The key is to stay on top of your breath when you go out running and make it easy. It should start to feel easier, not the other way about. Um, and I'll, but I'll go into more detail of that at the weekend again. Um, if you want, you could throw in a, a circuit session. Um, when it like some sort of body weight circuit, but you've got to just be careful not to give yourself. You've got to be careful you're not going to fatigue yourself too much for the actual sessions themselves because the sessions are really intense, and you'll get stronger just with the sessions at the shed alone. So I'm talking purely about a fat loss point of view here. Um, any more than four sessions a week, there's a lot of diminishing returns, and um, when it comes to intense training, so beyond four sessions a week, I think um, from a fat loss point of view, because I understand there's other reasons to train, mainly mental health reasons. Um, but if it's just for, for like, trying to get fitter and all that and, and, and leaner, then beyond four sessions a week is probably not need, where your focus needs to be. Generally, walking about, moving about day to day should be your focus, Getting making sure you're getting a decent amount of activity on a daily basis. And then, of course, diet. So we're moving on to diet quickly. Um, I'm going to try and keep this short. You could go through a more extreme um, approach for 8 to 12 weeks if you want to maximise results and when I look back to what the guys did what I, and, um, and what I would do if I was wanting to like lean up quicker I would be doing 4 sessions a week I'd be keeping, making sure that I'm active maybe active, like walking That may, I might be playing football in the garden with the boys, I might be just doing all that sort of stuff you need I know, you've, I know I've said before about the protein when it comes to maximising results 
a pro- taking a high protein intake and probably taking a protein supplement is almost non-negotiable. If you want. In fact, it is non-negotiable. You cannot maximize results if you've not got a high protein diet. It's just not possible. So I would highly recommend if you're wanting to maximize results in a not necessarily a sustainable way would be to take one, at least one, at least one protein supplement a day, probably better with two, which would be 65, 60 to 65 grams of protein extra a day in supplement form. That's not, I understand that's not a lifestyle sustainable choice to make, but that is what this video is about, but it will maximize results over a short period of time. Um, so there is the first key thing I would recommend. You, it's, if you're, if it's just non-negotiable, okay? <laughs> um, if you wanted to go down that route, then that was what you would do. Um, other two supplements I would consider would be creatine and beta-alanine. Creatine has a host of benefits. It can help get you stronger. It can help improve muscle mass. It can help with recovery. And there's also some less publicized benefits in terms of cognitive health um, that it's been shown very promising signs of. So um, I would take creatine five grams a day, just take an additional pint of water a day or something like that, um, just to help with any potential muscle cramps that sometimes occur when you first start taking it. Um, which is quite uncommon by the way, right? It's not a common side effect that, but if, if you start to take it and then you get a bit crampy sometimes in your hammies or whatever, then you're maybe not drinking enough water. Um, the other one to take would be beta alanine. Okay, beta alanine is also an excellent supplement. It's been it's, it's shown that it's been shown that it's been it's beneficial um, for sport and performance, particularly when it comes to um, sort of that high intensity type training, um, particularly training sort of protocols that last between one and four minutes of intensities um, and that's because it can help buffer um i was going to say lactic acid but it's not strictly lactic acid it's hydrogen ions which are a byproduct of lactate build up um in the blood or lactate so um when you train hard that that sort of burning sensation of of, of lactic acid inverted commas that you get that's hydrogen ions and beta alanine is essentially like a gateway supplement that unlocks a padlock to allow the body to increase uh, carnosine stores. Carnosine is something that basically is like a fire hose for hydrogen ions and it sort of like sort of buffers hydrogen um, which is what that burning sensation you get is. So beta alanine un- uh, helps increase carnosine stores which can help buffer that lactate uh, which can then allow you to train a bit better or work for harder or for longer and it's also been shown especially taken alongside creatine to be positive have a positive impact on a uh, body composition and uh, body fat percentage can help improve that as well um, but creatine like beta alanine but even more so with beta alanine it, it doesn't have an instantaneous effect of, or, or benefit it has to be taken it's an accumulative thing and uh, because essentially it does gradually build up the stores build up um, over time so you need to be taking it for a minimum I'd say of 30 days before you, you'd you actually enjoy the benefits of it even though when you take it you'd, you'd instantly be aware that you're taking it because it gives you a wee sort of tingly feeling in your or itchy hair which isn't there's nothing it's a harmless right but just in case you, you go around this route feel free to research it yourself right but that's the three supplements um, the t- beta alanine and creatine aren't essential right but protein supplement is definitely essential um, okay so and then beyond that it's just a case of like try to minimize processed foods try and cook a lot of meals from scratch if possible stir fries a lot of veg stir fries throw in some rice some rice noodles get carbohydrates from like peas and carrots that kind of thing plus and uh, sweet potatoes and try to not try to minimize takeaways try to minimize alcohol consume lots of water um these kind of things so the, the, the approach is pretty straightforward the key is to not eat too little though um because then you won't have any energy and you won't be able to perform at the sessions so what you could do is make sure that you have decent carbohydrate intake on the training days so like baked potatoes and things like that and then the non-training days you could maybe go lower carb um but if you were to go low carb you can't go low carb and low fat at the same time because they'll have too little energy to and you'll just feel like crap so if you want to go low carb on those other days that's fine maybe it's potentially going to be beneficial but you need to make sure that you're keeping a decent bit of fat in your diet as well um you know like butter things like that so you can make have like poached eggs and salmon for breakfast that kind of thing um but you still be needing to keep in your protein supplements maybe throw in a banana into the protein supplement for a bit of like 
energy and a bit of natural sugar as well. So, but yeah, uh, I'm hoping this doesn't then get you overthinking, <laughs> right, and start overthinking things. This video is just for anyone who's like want to go a wee bit extreme for a while and see what they can do. But if it raises more questions than answers, then just feel free to send me a message back, and that'll do a think for now. <laughs>